good to have you with us today. Welcome to the online service. It's always good to come together around the Word of God, doing some praise, some worship, praying for each other and believing God together because that brings great outcomes and God likes it, we like it. Yeah. This is what we were created for. So let's lift our voices and sing and praise Him today together. Fade 
Well, this is the time that we come. We reach out to God, we've praised Him, and He responds with love. God is responding to your prayer today. If you've been asking Him for something, now's the time to reach out and say, Thank you, Lord, I receive, because He did it on the cross for you. So, Father, today as we come into this time of prayer, we thank you, Lord, that we can come boldly and directly to you. We can each and all together ask in agreement for whatever need we have, and we can pray for you to do things. And we already know in advance that whatever we ask in Jesus' name, the answer is already yes. And I want to encourage you today to come boldly to that throne of grace. You may have gone through times of doubting and you, you don't quite feel confident in asking God, but He loves you and He wants to answer your prayers. So open your heart today. Well, Father, today we are praying for each one of us, for our hearts to be open, mm -hmm. for our ears to be open, for us to have a hearing heart, mm -hmm. the wisdom of God and your spirit of wisdom and revelation flooding our lives, Father. Yep and that we would also have the knowledge of your Thank will you, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that we can walk worthy of the Lord and be fruitful in every mm. good work in Jesus' name. And we pray also that we can increase in the knowledge of God. Father, we pray that we can know you better and better mm. and get away from all the misgivings, all the wrong understandings, and to know the God of love, the God mm. of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that Jesus is coming back again and the Holy Spirit is sent to be with us and in us today. If you feel like you've missed opportunities and you've, you know, you look back and you have regrets, today is your day to put them aside and to look to God and to thank Him for new open doors and new opportunities with that confidence that He loves you and His plan for you is waiting there for you to step into. Well, Father, I pray for each person today mm. that you would show them and guide them. And we claim today, Father, that you have given us peace. Peace, Jesus said, he gives us not like the world gives peace, but it's a peace that is absolutely amazing and is greater than anything the world can do. And we claim mm. that peace. And today, Lord, we cast all of the care on you, especially about the pandemic and about those that have got symptoms and worrying signs and we just thank you father first of all that all of the cares belong to you and we cast them over to you and we pray and ask you to move in every life in jesus name yes we pray today specifically for those that have COVID symptoms we're asking god for total healing and restoration quick recovery in the name of jesus of every COVID symptom right now in Jesus' name. Be healed. Amen. And Father, I'm praying for someone with a blockage in the ear canal as well. Mm. And in Jesus' name, we stand against that blockage and command it to come open. Yeah. It might have only been bothering you for one day, but that's enough. Mm. And God is concerned because you're concerned. And so we command ear open, blockage mm. go, wax come out. Any infection that's there, we command that to dry up and cease in Jesus' name. And any residual effect that would try to come in the inner ear or balancing mechanism, we reverse that in Jesus' name and claim full, complete healing and restoration and Jesus. open ear canals in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Those suffering from lack of energy, mm. Father, I'm asking that you would energize them by the power Thank of your Lord. spirit and let the cause of that thing be obliterated in jesus name Amen. thank you lord god for energizing them in jesus name thank you lord and father there's somebody suffering from giddiness and the room is turning at times that's a shocking condition and we stand against that vertigo whatever it is mm. we bind it up in jesus name thank you lord. all dizziness giddiness vertigo we rebuke it command it to leave and claim that everything will come back to equilibrium, back into its right place. And whoever was suffering from that, we claim that they'll be able to get back into their life like normal and that it will go away. Even if the cause of it's never found, we stop it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And all inner ear infection goes now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Healed. Someone with pancreatitis and problems with the pancreas, 
We claim a healing over that as well. And in Jesus' name, we declare the right amount of insulin, all of that working properly. In Jesus' name, be healed in the pancreas today. Thank you, Lord. There's somebody there struggling with foot disease. In the name of Jesus, mm. we stand against arthritis. Mm. We stand against the blockages that are there trying to stop things working correctly in the foot. And we command that to be healed. We're praying for others with foot problems and disease because of diabetes. And in the name of Jesus, we claim that that would be completely reversed. Mm. That again, the pancreas will work properly. No Thank more insulin Lord. resistance. And that everything mm. would work Thank as it's Lord. supposed to work. Yeah. And that foot disease, we reverse it and command it to go back in Jesus' name. Thank you, Wherever Lord. there's not enough circulation and good health in the foot, we command that to be sorted out, to straighten up and everything to work properly in Jesus' name. As somebody who's had to walk with a crutch this week, or a walking stick, you've got knee problems and pain when you try to walk, we just claim a mm. very, very quick healing for Thank that Lord. Yes, in Lord. the name of Jesus. Be healed, Thank receive you, your healing, Cast all the care over on the Lord and look forward to complete recovery in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Anyone who has a financial need, I want to encourage you to look to God. He is your provider. He has made a way to provide for your every need. Father, I thank you that our needs are met in you. Thank you, Jesus. And today, Father, I want to conclude this session by praying for anybody that's struggling spiritually to draw close to you. And we know that that is a lie from the enemy. And in Jesus' name, we bind up that lie. We yep. bind up that work of the enemy. Thank and we Lord. command every blocking Thank devil to get out of the way. Mm. And Father, I pray for all of our viewers today that they will know that what Jesus paid is enough for them. Yeah. They are forgiven, that they have the invitation to come boldly. And in the name of Jesus, we remove every lying devil and every lie that says they're not forgiven, can't be accepted, inferior or unworthy in Jesus' name. Be free right now in yes. Jesus' name. Amen.
Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. the day. COVID has changed everything. It leaves us with unanswered questions, but God has not changed. I've got a never ending love for you. You know that I will die for you. I've got a never ending love for you. More than enough to see you through. Sometimes in the midst of uncertainty, your thinking can shift into confusion. It's time to realign your thinking back to how God sees the world, how God sees you and your unique personality, identity and talents. From the very start, you knew all that I could be. You have always known me, you created me. You comprehend my heart Formed by inward parts Even in my darkest night You shone your light As I worship you You open up my eyes to see As I worship you Within crisis times, there are difficulties and there are dangers, but there are also opportunities. God is still able to turn all things for good. Even if you are suffering a temporary setback, that is not your destiny. Every setback is a setup for a comeback. Don't get distracted or waylaid by circumstances. Don't let the tedium of survival at this time wear you down. Get ready for new opportunities. Get ready for new open doors and get ready to walk through them.
don't get stuck or distracted by the menial or even the urgent situations around you. You may very well miss a new opportunity that can only present itself in the time of crisis. It's time to get a fresh vision. Habakkuk chapter 2 says, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Vision keeps you looking forward and looking for the open doors. Let's posture ourselves before God to hear his voice and to receive his direction. If you have a vision, you won't get stuck or distracted in the circumstances. You'll be looking for the way out. Write the vision and wait on God to bring it to pass. Lean into the future and allow him to reveal what that looks like. Scripture says, Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told you. We cannot wait around for things to get better. We have to look for the opportunities within the situation we are in. Even in turbulent times, there are opportunities. We must believe in Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. We all have a purpose in God. Life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. You came into my life, lifted me up, lifted me out. Your light shone in the dark. Psalm 90.12 says, Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. We need wisdom to see and to seize every open door that is set before us. Live life with a dream and that will become much more powerful than mistakes and missed opportunities of the past. Joseph was connected to a dream and that got him through every crisis he had to encounter. Now his brothers, on the other hand, were jealous of him and this disconnected them from the dream that they could have been a part of. There is room for everyone. Focus on the vision. Focus on being the best you that you can be. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the whole world. God has a path for you and he has provision for your dream. So seize the day. Thank you, Lord, for lifting up the blindfold from my eyes. Revealing truth inside my heart, dispelling all the lies. Thank you, Lord, for coming and allowing me to see. As I reflect on all You've done I
Spirit sound, rushing wind, fire of God, fall within. Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent, turn from sin, revival embers smoldering, breath of God, fan us into flame. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. For hearts that burn with holy fear, purify in faith and deed, refine as fire, strengthen what remains. So we the church repair your light, lamp of the flame, city bright, king and kingdom come is what we of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, a holy anointing, the power of your presence, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. The greatest revival ever. This is part three, warfare against the real culprit. Father, as we open the word of God and as we look at this series today, we're praying and asking for you to flood our hearts with wisdom, with revelation, with understanding, not only so that we can see it, but so also we can apply it to our lives, our churches, our communities, our families, our businesses, and everything we're part of in Jesus' name. Amen. And the foundational scripture for this is Mark chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. Immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. 
And then after that, of course, Jesus began a very supernatural ministry. People were coming to him. He was healing them until Matthew says he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. This is an amazing visitation of God. And this is what God wants to do again in our immediate future. And we can see the great revival of God here, wherever you are, in our life, in our church, in our business, in our community, in our families, wherever we are involved. And I believe that if we give our attention to the word of God and really study this, and not only study it for academic information, but let this really shape our lives until when it says repent, we repent. When it says worship, we worship. When it says warfare, we warfare. Even if it says fasting, if you can't fast food, fast something, fast television, fast from something so that you can devote yourself into prayer and get with God and meet with him, even if it takes a wilderness place and get hold of an understanding of spiritual warfare and how to win. Amen. We can see the great revival here now. And this is how we can do it. Today's theme is how we can see the great revival here now. We're on part three, warfare against the real culprit. Five points today. Number one, make sure you're in right standing with the covenant, which of course ends in worship in spirit and in truth. And when you're full of the Holy Spirit, number two is follow the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Number three, win the wrestle with the word. Number four, drive out the light blocking spirit of death. Number five, return clothed in power, ready for some word work. Amen. Teaching, preaching, applying, demonstrating. Be ready for it. This is what it said about Jesus after he returned from winning the wilderness warfare over the wimp with the word. Now, I know they're all starting with W's. Then Jesus returned in the power of the spirit to Galilee and news of him went throughout the whole surrounding region and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So how do we see this great revival here now? Number one. Make sure you are in right standing in the covenant. Listen to how Jesus stood against the temptation, which is inevitable. Here we go. Matthew 4, 1 to 5. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the son of God, remember Jesus said in Mark 4, the sower sows the word, Satan comes immediately. When Jesus was baptized, this is my beloved son, Satan came immediately. If you are the son, it's the same pattern all the time. And we've got to look at how Jesus dealt with it. If you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, the fact that Jesus could use it is written because what is written is the conditions and the promises, the benefits of the covenant. The first covenant that God had with Abraham, he said, if you walk uprightly before me, that was the condition Abraham had to keep. But if we're to cut a long story short, the condition for us is to be in Christ Jesus, to live by faith, to walk in the spirit, to have repented of our sin, been born again and living a holy life. If we are led by the spirit and living by faith in that way, then this covenant holds with us. Amen. The covenant can't be broken because it's a covenant made between God and Jesus. Jesus absolutely fulfilled that walk uprightly before me and the covenant is made. It's strong and it can't be broken. Amen. But we have to be in Christ Jesus to be in his side of that covenant. When we are, everything written in that covenant 
holds for us. And so if we use the word, it is written, it's the strength of that covenant that wins out. And remember, you must through many afflictions enter the kingdom of God, according to the Apostle Paul in Acts 14, 22. So God has provided in the covenant everything for us to be an overcomer of these many tribulations and the tempter and all of his temptations when we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and every affliction of a wilderness and tempting period. Amen. Conditions of the covenant can't go wrong. They can't fail from God's side. We can only get ourselves out of sync with it. So we must make sure we're in right relationship with the covenant so that it is written works for us. Amen. If we say it is written in our covenant and we're not in the covenant, the devil just says, well, what covenant? You don't have a covenant. But if we're in Christ Jesus, he can't argue with it because he's the loser and Jesus is the winner. And one of the things you need, as I said, and we taught it last week, we need to worship in spirit and in truth. And I encourage you, if you haven't seen that message or the previous one on the prophetic warning, find them on YouTube, on Facebook, go back to the previous weeks and listen to it. Make sure you know this because it's not just a message to tickle our ears. It's not a message to hear nice poetry or to hear someone talking. It's life changing truth and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free if you believe it receive it take it into your life and not be a hearer only but a doer of the word so number two today is follow the holy spirit into a wilderness warfare before you get there you got to make sure you're in the covenant and you're in right standing in it then number two you're worshiping god you're full of the holy spirit He starts to lead you. We're going to read this again from Mark. Immediately, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. Luke says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So we have to follow into that wilderness or the Holy Spirit maybe drives us in there. And that really does mean that. He drove him in there. I don't mean in a car. I mean, he pushed him out into it. That's what the Greek means in Mark chapter 1. So we're going to this wilderness and we're going out there, according to verse 2 of Luke 4, to be tempted for 40 days by the devil. Amen. It's a lonely place. It's a dry place. It's a lifeless place. It's desolate and isolated. Amen. There's shortage. There's not enough. We've kind of been in a bit of a wilderness throughout this pandemic era. When he was in the wilderness, he was tempted by the devil. By the devil. This is no joke. The devil's not just a figment of our imagination or referring to the anthropomorphic when we say, oh, I had a thought from the devil. No, he is a real person. Jesus met with him one-on-one and had to deal with him and overcame him. We have a saying that says you have to stare down your demons, but that's absolutely the truth. Only those demons are not bad quirks in your personality. The demons are real spiritual entities that are bent on evil. They're malevolent. They are wicked without any cause whatsoever. And this is what we have to stand against in a spiritual warfare. It's a holy thing. Amen. And this happened, as I said, in the wilderness. Jesus was hungry. There was no air conditioner. It was uncomfortable. There's no soft bed to lie on. No TV, no motel room, no room service. He had to go through with it and deal with it. And that's one of the things we have to face up to. We have to deal with our spiritual warfare. We have to face it, stare it down, and drive it out by overcoming it the way Jesus did. Amen. We have to be like Jesus, who won the war over the wimp in the wilderness wrestle using the word as his weapon, because they all start with W. But when you think about it, 40 days is only six weeks, not even. 42 days is six weeks. It's less than six weeks. Right now, we are in the middle of January, so we're talking about the end of February. That's coming. It's going to roll around. 
And do we want things to be the same forever and a day? Or would we like to really get in on this and see the great revival? It's not impossible to do a 40-day fast. I can't tell you to do it because that's between you and the Holy Spirit. But you can do 40 days of fasting something. You can do one day of fasting each week for 40 weeks. There's lots of ways to deal with this. But we need to follow the Holy Spirit as he leads us into this warfare. It's not nice. It's not comfortable. It's hard. You can't sleep properly sometimes. But it's inevitable and absolutely necessary. Or God wouldn't have sent his son into it. Amen. Number three today is win the wrestle with the word. Win temptations over the lust of the flesh. Remember when Adam and Eve were tempted, it comes up with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. In John's epistle, he mentions this. So what happened to Jesus in the wilderness? The devil tries him with the same style of temptation. Remember for Adam and Eve, it looked good, it was good to eat, and it was good to make one wise. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Amen. So I'm going to read Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 13. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. He was hungry. He hadn't eaten anything for 40 days. And the temptation is going to come in line with our flesh. Right in line with it. He was hungry and the devil's tempting him right there. See, hunger is of the flesh physical hunger. And he said, all right, turn the stones into bread. Use your gift and your power for self-gratification to gratify the flesh. And as part of Jesus' worship, he has to surrender to the will of God. He resists the temptation to meet his own needs. Hello, very powerful thought. Instead, he stood on a covenant that he had with his father, but the Holy Spirit led him to the right word at the right time. Amen. It's no use saying right there, and David slept with Bathsheba. That's not the right word at the right time. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And there's nothing the devil could say about that because Jesus was in that covenant and he said, God will supply my need. Amen. It starts with, spiritual nutrition. Like last week when the woman was at the well, she got spiritual water from Jesus. She didn't have to draw water. Jesus spoke the word of God to her. And when they came back with the food, he didn't eat it because even though he'd been hungry, he wasn't conscious of it. This is what this is talking about. We need to overcome the natural appetites, temptations with the word of God. Amen. Then there's the lust of the eyes. The devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I'll give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. That's a real temptation because this was you could say relinquished to the devil when he won over Adam and Eve with these same temptations. They yielded to him, which by default meant they were worshipping him. Once they had done that, he had control through them because who you worship is who you serve. And the way he works through human beings is he takes control of their tongue. How many swear words are about God and Jesus and Christ? Verse 7, therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. Verse 8, and Jesus answered and said to him, get behind me, Satan, for it is written, 
You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. So if Jesus had have worshipped the devil, he would have become his servant. The devil would have been happy to run his kingdom through Jesus if Jesus had have relinquished his worship of God and by default become a worshipper of the devil. Because really there's only two kingdoms. A lot of people that aren't saved might be saying, I don't worship the devil, but Jesus said, if you're not with me, you're against me. And the Bible teaches in the last days that it's those that not only take the mark of the beast, but also worship his image, worshiping the beast. It involves worship. We have to be like Jesus. Overcome the temptation for shortcuts with the word of God and the lust of the eyes. Then the third temptation was the pride of life. Then he brought Jesus to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. And it's like saying all of the people will be there in the temple courtyard. They'll see you up there looking over. Then suddenly you'll jump off and they're expecting it to be a suicide. And the devil says, God won't let you die because it's written. He'll give his angels charge over you to keep you. And in their hands, they'll bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. (laughs) It's possibly a misquote. And he's trying to trick Jesus by trying to quote to him the word of God. But Jesus responds with the right word according to the covenant. And he says, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Amen. The devil said, I will ascend. I will be like the most high God. The devil was the one who conceived pride and initiated and originated sin. And he's trying to draw Jesus into that same sin. And so if Jesus had thrown himself down and angels caught him, he could have landed softly and everybody would have known then that he was supernatural. He was the son of God. It would have been a shortcut. But Jesus had to come. He didn't claim to be the son of God. He said, I am the son of man. And he preached the word of God because it's about people putting their faith in the word, not the preacher. Amen. Jesus didn't say, "Okay, guys, I'm the son of God. You know, I could smash you like that. Do what I say. No, they have to come to a revelation of the truth in their hearts. Jesus said, they that are of the truth will hear my voice. They're the ones that are of his kingdom. Amen. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. They follow by responding to the truth, not by responding to some personality or responding to some very belligerent or very persuasive person, some charismatic person. They respond to the influence of truth in the depth of their being. Remember, he may ascend to the hill of the Lord. He who speaks the truth in his heart. This is what Jesus wanted. No shortcuts. And he said, It has been written, you won't tempt the Lord your God. Then verse 13 says, When the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Amen. You've got to to stay at this until it's over. You've got to stay at it till it's over. I know what the devil's like. I've cast out a lot of demons. I've dealt with it. And I know that right up until that demons leave, they're all saying, what you're doing is not working. What you're saying is not bothering me. And then all of a sudden, I remember this and one time when I learned it, the devil was speaking through the person saying, there's nothing there, Dave. It's no use rebuking. And I kept going and kept going. The person went quiet. I kept going. I kept standing on the word. Then all of a sudden, the devil threw up its hands and it said, that's it. I've had enough. I'm out of here. And it's a moral warfare. It's not a warfare of sandpapering off the rough parts. It's a warfare of keeping up your stance on your covenant until the devil gives up. He will give up if you persist and persevere. It's not easy. It takes persistence. It takes a persistent faith that will not back down, not change its confession, not ever back off, not be convinced, not vary, but stay there and keep 
at it. He has no answer and he will change his mind because it's a moral warfare and it's about choices. I choose to believe and keep going and keep declaring the truth. He chooses to deceive, to deflect, to deny. But after a while, he has to yield because Jesus is the winner and he's the loser and Jesus is Lord over him. Amen. So I'm encouraging you today. Keep going. So how do we see the great revival here now? Make sure you're in right standing in the covenant. Worship in spirit and in truth till you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Then follow the Holy Spirit into a wilderness for warfare and win the wrestle with the word over the wimp in the wilderness. Amen. And number four, drive out the light blocking spirit of death. Now I'm going to read Matthew chapter four, verses 13 to 17. This is right when Jesus came back after winning over the devil. This is what it says in Matthew, and I'm in a different version. And leaving his residence in Nazareth, he came and lived in Capernaum, which is on the seacoast. He lived in both the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. And this is kind of quoting out of the book of Isaiah. This happened so that what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the region along the sea, Transjordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who dwelt in darkness saw great light. And to them who sat in the region, overshadowed by death, light has risen. It's like a parallel thing. They dwelt in darkness, they saw light. Why were they in darkness? Because something was blocking the light. That's what a shadow is. It's when something steps between the light and where the light was shining, you can see a shadow. And in this case, the shadow was caused by death. And you'll notice that death there is written with an uppercase D, implying it's a person. The Greek commentary says that death is personified. It was an evil spirit. It was the work of the devil. And no matter how much light was shining from heaven, the enemy was blocking it and stopping it getting through. That's why it talks about those whom the enemy has blindfolded. And it talks about us in times past in the ignorance of our mind because of the blindness, blindingness. Suddenly, when Jesus dealt with the devil, light shone and it says the light has risen. This is what we've got to do as well. We've got to stick at this warfare to drive out the light blocking spirit of death. So crucially important because otherwise you can preach the gospel till the cows come home. You can preach the gospel till you wear your voice out and people don't get it. But once that thing is gone that stops revelation flowing and the revelation flows into people's hearts when you preach, they hear it and God's spirit brings the revelation. This could be holding back your family, could be holding back your church, could be holding back those at your workplace, those at your school, your place of education, those people that you know in the community. This could be what's holding them back and it has to be dealt with. And you know, I can remember during the 1980s, all the prayer and fasting we did before we did all those successful outreaches and we did things with Youth Alive and school concerts and school outreaches, we saw stacks of people getting saved. Towards the end of the 80s, we had our own church and we kept up the prayer and fasting. I wouldn't even go to the church on a Sunday if I hadn't been praying and fasting. It would have been a waste of time. Then in the 90s, we kept up the prayer and fasting and all of that prayer we did at the Dandenong Church, the fasting. And then we had these big outreaches. As I said, hundreds of people got saved. The church was in a constant revival of people coming in, getting saved, being discipled, growing in God. It was amazing. You know, all of this applies to us. I'm going to read a little bit from Ephesians chapter 6 where it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. That tells me that we do wrestle, but it's not against flesh and blood. It's not against people, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this age. And if you don't know what any of them are, listen to the next one. Against the spiritual hosts of wickedness. Amen. Spiritual hosts. Host is a Bible word for troops. It's for an army. Spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You've got to fight this spiritual battle and win it. That's exactly what happened in the book of Daniel. He fasted 21 days. When the angel broke through, he said, we've been in a warfare. You kept fasting. You kept your confession. We broke through. And here's the message. Therefore, it says in verse 13, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians 4.27, Nor give place to the devil. 2 Corinthians 4.3-4, But if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. In Acts 26, 16 to 18, we see the Apostle Paul recounting the vision Jesus gave to him, talking about how he'd been obedient to it all of his ministry life. And this is what he said, that Jesus commanded him. Verse 17, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. This is the reason in verse 18 why Jesus sent Paul to the people to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance amongst those who are sanctified by faith. This has got to be done. No one said it's easy, but it's necessary. The unsafe can't do this for themselves. They will persecute you, criticize you, reject you if that blindfolds on their eyes. You've got to deal with this first. And remember, it's a spiritual being. It's a moral warfare. You fight with the truth until it gives up. It's too late for the devil to be saved. It's too late for his angels to be saved and demons. Their destiny is already written. Their judgment's already given. Yours isn't. Mine isn't. Our judgment has two choices. One, we can be in Christ Jesus and be part of this kingdom. Two, we can say no to Jesus, stay in the devil and end up in his kingdom and in his destiny. This is our choice. It's not complicated. But to be in Jesus means repenting of your sin, turning from your old life, receiving his new birth, being filled with his spirit and letting that Holy Spirit guide you, confessing that Jesus is Lord, believing he rose from the dead, accepting his righteousness, accepting his new birth. Then you'll know that your name is in the Lamb's book of life and you can do this right now. I can lead you in a prayer for this first step today. It's not complicated, but it does take humility of heart and putting your faith in Jesus, not in yourself, Putting your faith in him. You can't see him, usually. You can't feel him, usually. But you will know something happened on the inside. And then you walk forward by faith, confessing that Jesus is Lord, believing that he is guiding you because he most certainly will be. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So say this prayer after me today which invites Jesus into your life, fulfills the conditions for salvation. And if you say it to God with all your heart, you can receive that new birth and start your life with Jesus today, knowing you're right with God and you're getting ready to push the devil around instead of having him run you around. So say this after me. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for paying for everything I've done wrong. Today, Lord Jesus, I repent and turn from my old life. I receive you as my saviour. 
I confess you are now my Lord. I receive your new birth. And by the grace of God, I will follow you from this day forward as my good shepherd. Jesus is Lord. I say that. I am born again. I am a new creation. My old life is gone. My new life has come. And my name is in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name. Now let me pray for you, Father. I pray for each one that prayed that prayer today. And I'm asking that you would seal in their hearts that they are born again. Lead them to other like-minded people that they can have great friendships with and show them who to talk to openly and freely about this in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, today I pray for everyone else that you would show us that this is not just a message, but this is important instructions from heaven itself through the word of God for us to follow and live by in Jesus' name. And we thank you for your grace to obey your word. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today. Once again, that concludes our service and it was so good to have your company with us today. We pray that you have a wonderful week and until next week, from Dave and Rosanna, it's bye. bye.